G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. Just before we get into the crux of this video, I just want to explain a change that I've made to the About section on this channel. Last night, a mate of mine who's got absolutely no interest in computers whatsoever sent me an email saying I should put a disclaimer in the About section of this channel regarding my views and opinions. And I took his advice. Let me just reiterate, the opinions and views expressed on this channel are mine. Now, I've said it before, you can agree with them, disagree with them, debate them, challenge them, I don't care. They are my opinions and my views. I was brought up to be honest, blunt, and have an opinion. Personally, I think the fact that these days you're supposed to keep your opinions and views to yourself is crap. Political correctness is just absolute bullshit. I don't agree with it. Now, if I don't like something, I'm going to say it. If you're offended by it, I'm sorry you're offended, but it's my opinion and my view of something. I think this whole thing of, you know, keep your opinions and views to yourself with political correctness is bullshit. Seriously. As I say, if I don't like something or I think something's crap, I'll say it. And I'll say it how I see it. So, in the about section of this, I have said the views and opinions expressed on this channel are mine. Okay? I think I've mentioned it before, but I just want to make sure. That's for anyone who watches this channel, as well as my loyal subscribers. And I must say, I thank all my subscribers for subscribing. It's nice to see people who are out there who are interested in this sort of stuff. All right, enough of that crap. Let's get on to the, the uh, point of this video. Yesterday, we put together a serial console. All right, not a real one, okay? It's not a true VT type console. It's a small form factor that we have made into a dedicated serial terminal emulator, for want of a better term, okay? So today, we're going to fire it up. And we're going to use it on my V490. Now, the one thing I forgot to mention, and I apologise, another fuck up from Backyard IT, was, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> sorry, was when you set this sort of thing up under Windows, I forgot to mention to put PuTTY into the startup folder. That way when you boot Windows, now remember we're just doing this with Windows at the moment, it automatically uh, shows up for you to set up into serial mode. Now, for the purposes of this demonstration, uh, we're going to boot the V490. Well, first off, obviously we're going to boot up the SFF, or the serial console. Again, another thing for the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to call it the serial management console because we're going to manage the server from the serial port, initially, initially. Now, I can't remember what disk I've got in the optical drive of it, but what we do first off, now, back in the early days, you would turn the serial, you'd, you'd um, turn on the serial console and then you'd fire up the server. You wouldn't fire up the server before the serial console because if you're in debug mode or maintenance mode, you would miss certain things. So you bring up the serial console, then you'd bring up the hardware. So let's do that. So we'll boot the terminal. And we'll just wait for it to uh, pop up. The screen's turned on. This is the quickest booting XP machine I've ever seen. Probably because there's absolutely nothing on it. Let's face it, some XP machines boot very slowly. It depends on how much stuff you've got ready for startup. Now, already, putty's up. Okay? Putty's up. Now, I'm having issues with... Oh, it's decided it wants to work now. So, we select our serial. 
we configure our serial. Alright, there it is there. And we open the window. Now we maximise the window. So the next thing to do now will be to boot the V490. So let's go turn the V490 on. And we'll come over here and turn on the V490, which I've already got power applied. And we'll wait for it to start communicating. So there we go. So as you can see, now the other thing on here is I've got no network driver, I've got nothing. Essentially, it literally is just a serial terminal, okay? Probing all the fuel replaceable units. And there it is. All right, so we'll let this boot. We're not obviously gonna video the whole post for a V490, although I will say one thing. Booting this, is quicker than this. Obvious, really, I know. All right, so we'll come back and we will set the server up through the serial console. All right, so still going through the uh, power on self-test. And uh, you can see there that it's running post 4.22.34. obviously need to update that so we'll uh, we need to be able to update that to something I don't know what yet I think I'm supposed to be able to update that to 4.30 but we'll we'll get to that shortly now as I said we're just running XP um, there's no you could probably do it with Windows 2000 uh, you could probably do it with Windows 7 but the upside of having XP is very lightweight when you just install the very basic operating system with nothing else, okay? I don't even have the uh, network card turned on. I'll go for post reset. You can see there it's initializing all my CPUs, all four of them. Now, Back in the early days, you would get this on a just a, um, a a basically a terminal, a screen and a keyboard. Um, and as I said in the in the process of putting this serial unit together, terminals were used extensively in the early days, both from a dial-in point of view as well as a, as well as a oh, apologies. Um, you can see there it's got power supply one not receiving AC power. It's whatever really at the moment. You don't need to really concern you about that. I'm running it with just one power supply. Um, back in the early days, serial terminals were how users would interact with the actual server. They were terminals. Um, and then you would have the management console connected to the management point of the server. And as I said, that was a privileged user terminal, okay? Uh, the owner of the business may have access to it as well as the network administrators or net ops. Uh, and they would be the ones that would do, you know, add and remove users, as I said, change network settings, change file service, file sharing settings, add and remove hardware, change config, the whole lot, set up modem banks, etc. And that was all done through the serial console. Okay, so now what we'll do is I'll find out what disk I've actually got in there. So we'll go boot. Now I can also say boot IDE zero with this because it's the CD-ROM is on the IDE bus and it's uh, address, um, alias is boot IDE 0 but I'm going to say boot CD-ROM and with the V490 it'll reset and then start booting so this is administering the server from a serial management console now 
a long time ago when I had a different channel which I shut down years ago. I was back then doing a lot of retro IT, but I didn't have the equipment I have today. So I shut it down. Okay, so we've got Debbie in here. Now, this would be a good thing for anyone who knows what the problem is. Debian, now this is supposed to work on the V490. However, I'm gonna show you what happens. So if anyone out there can uh, tell me what the problem is, is it Debian, is it OBP or what, it'd be really good. So everything I've read says that Debian should work on a V490. I could be wrong, but in theory, I'm, I'm led to believe it should. But you'll see something will come up that says that there's a problem, namely that face. Now this is the error I get. Okay, that's the error. Now I noticed this error uh, a few days ago because I saw this come up. Bad SW trap. So if anyone knows what's going wrong, I'd be interested to know. All right. How about we try and install Solaris? So let's try installing Solaris. Okay. So we've reset. I don't know which Solaris disk I've put in. And you can see there... Sorry, it's an IDE 6. My apologies, I thought it was IDE 0, but it's not. It's IDE 6, I apologise for that, my mistake. Oh, it's going to be one of those days again, people. In the, um, in the early days of uh, serial, or consoles, a lot of them would have an NVRAM in them for the console settings. Now, you could look at the NVRAM for this, okay? I'm only saying look at it for this. As the hard drive inside this could be called the NVRAM. Not necessarily the ID prom, but it could be known as the NVRAM. If you were going to use Mobber X term, which saves your serial settings, you could look at the hard drive being the NVRAM because you turn it on, it boots up and opens up the terminal. Pretty much. Okay, so that's, this is basically using the serial terminal to administer the server. The other thing back in the early days too is this would be how you would install the operating system too. Sometimes the systems would come with the operating system already installed. Sometimes you had to install them off floppy disks. Other times they'd be, you know, you'd buy a server, the operating system would already be installed, and the end user would interact straight away. Log on with their uh, username and password, and under, certain, under the conditions of each user, they would have certain privileges. So that's, that's the essence of getting a serial system up and running. All right, let's come back once Solaris is uh, loaded. Okay, so I've ended up putting in Solaris 10. I really should learn to label my disks, but anyway, nevertheless. So, we're now booting from the CD into Solaris 10 or Sonos 5.10. That's the version there. And that's basically it. And now what you would do as with a, a serial management console or serial console is, you will go through the normal steps of installing the operating system, and then you would interact with it in the same way. So it, it, it while you can still do it from a, a network computer, this would give you a little bit more customization ability, especially if you've done a fuck up like me and it's getting DACP and DNS from this and locking up. And that's what I've been finding. 
So the idea behind this is, in theory, I should now be able to modify the DACP and DNS settings. So obviously the DNS would be 127.0.0.1 for itself. The DACP will be its own IP and the gateway will be untangled. Anyway, so that's it. A very simple, lightweight serial management computer. Um, as I said, it doesn't need to be highly specced up. It doesn't need to have a whole pile of grunt because it's only going to run as fast as it can talk to that. So even if you were to set it up on a quad-core Xeon processor with 16 gig of RAM and, you know, three hard drives in RAID 0, uh, RAID 1 with a global hot spare, it's not going to perform any better because it's only going to run as fast as the two can talk to each other. Anyway, I hope that's helped you out getting a, getting your own serial console. As I said, most old, any any motherboard with a DB9 uh, RS232 on it can act as a serial console. If you don't have a DB9 plug on it, you can get one of those USB to DB9 converters. My opinion, I wouldn't bother about it. There's plenty of old computers out there. Uh, you can build and get an old motherboard, just slap XP on it, all Linux, all Linux, I don't want to upset the Linux people. Put some sort, all right, I'll tell you, how about we generalize it? Put some sort of operating system on there with some sort of terminal. You don't need to connect it to the network because you're not going to do other, anything else but administer your server and be done with it. And that's it. Bob's your uncle. you got a serial console. All right, well, thank you for watching. I hope that's helped you out. Plenty more videos coming up in the near future. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.